So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Let's play a game. Let's play theology with pictures. Now, a lot of the church sees life like this, like there's this line between good and, well, not so good. And that a person who does not have God doesn't have Jesus in his or her life. And for many, that includes you when you're born. Well, that person is under the limbo pole, so to speak, between good and evil, except this is a time when you don't want to be clear in that pole. And if you look at this line like it's, well, the surface of the earth, well, then you can understand why someone like even our beloved Martin Luther could say something like, we are worms. That much is true. By the way, if I'm going to be a worm, I want to be lowly worm. <laughs> he has an apple car. <laughs> Yeah, he's one awesome monopod. Hmm. Well, back to us other worms. The idea, according to the church, was that until the love of Jesus entered us from the outside, you know, like a lightning bolt, or like it hit Paul on that road to Damascus, or, or how it hit Jake in that great scene from the Blues Brothers. Well, until that happened, we were just completely evil, totally immersed in the stuff, unable to do anything good. But once this happened, we became good, or at least acceptable to God. We call this justification. Justification by grace through faith. Being made right with God by Jesus by believing in Jesus. Now, this idea has a lot going for it, and it still informs my thinking a lot. In the end, I know I depend on God. I need God's grace to hold me together, fill my cracks, so to speak, to forgive me when I need forgiven, to make me into the person I need to be, not just to be saved, but to be a better me. And if part of faith isn't about becoming a better me, What's the point? I mean, the universe needs a better me, probably more than it needs to save my stinking hide. So review. Typical church view. Line of good and evil. We are underachievers. Jesus enters and whoosh, we become acceptable. We get our heads heads above water, to mix a metaphor, and we become okay with God. Now this view, this view of us being totally immersed in evil, really took hold, and maybe you can guess it, when Christianity became the religion of the Roman Empire. Because as you've heard us say before, this is when hell became super important in our thinking because the church was suddenly saddled with the duty of keeping everybody in line for the empire and for the emperor. And, with, and this line of thought, rather, reached its zenith in the time of Martin Luther, a thousand years later. And Luther basically rebelled against it, and he preached the justification we've been talking about. But when you read Genesis, you realize even this picture, this picture Luther painted with justification is a little incomplete. Because, you see, these words are very problematic when you set them up against our desire to call ourselves worms. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Note, this was so nice, they said it twice. We are in the image of God. This picture here, you know, with the guy existing under that line that separates evil and good, that can't be totally accurate if we are in the image of God. It just can't be. Now, back in the early, early church, you know, the church right after Jesus and before Rome, they actually got this. 
because they had a dilemma. They went out speaking the truth of the gospel, and they found out, hey, there are a lot of good ideas out here. But we're not the only ones that have some truth to speak. There was truth out there they didn't speak. They had to deal with the fact that they didn't own all the truth. Now, a lot of Greek Orthodox Christians, they think of Plato and Aristotle as Christian saints. The church doesn't officially, but they honor them all the time within the church. You see, they lived about 300 years before Jesus. They never knew Jesus. But they spoke the kind of truth that the new church was encountering. It was good stuff. It was above the line, if you will. And so the church recognized that God had to have touched others, not just them. And so you get these wonderful words from places like John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him. What has come into being in Him was life, and here comes. And the life was the light of all people. There was good stuff in there because God was present there in creation. And for me, this really comes together in these lines from Genesis, in God's image. God's there because human beings have been created to have God there. Ever see a quote from the Dalai Lama? Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. This is a Buddhist monk. But if you hear him talk, hey, if you hear him talk about Jesus, you realize he listens to Jesus a lot better than a lot of us. But he doesn't fit our churchy model. According to his model, this model, I, I should say, he shouldn't be able to say beautiful things. He shouldn't have good to proclaim. He should be immersed in evil. He should be, you know, just a worm. But when we embrace that he, like others who aren't exactly like us, are still in God's image. We can embrace the beauty when they speak it and not be threatened by the fact that, oh wow, they're pretty smart. How'd they do that without Jesus? They do it because God's in there. And that means even without the lightning bolts, if you take Genesis at its word, God's in us too from the start. You know, we act like we're the only folks with a creation story. Heck, we act like we wrote it. Even though I don't think there are a lot of people here with Jewish blood. But every culture has a creation story. And many of those stories, they deal with the mystery of stuff. Like, where'd that chair the best sitting in come from? You know, the stuff in it. Before it was wood, before it was cloth, before it was stuffing. Where did matter come from? And for some cultures that would say, look at a mountain range and say, hey, you know, that kind of looks like a person laying down. The answer came to fruition in a tale that sounded like this. Once upon a time, there was a big, mean god. We're going to drop the fact that this god was usually the parent of, or the uncle of, or sometimes even the mother of all the other gods. And the big, mean god tried to kill all the good gods, and so the strongest of the good gods, the dude, because he's always a dude, rose up to meet the evil god in combat. And there's a battle, and there's fighting, and scratching, and kicking, and weaponry, and eventually death. The big, mean god dies, and there is much rejoicing. But the problem comes with what to do with the carcass. And so 
Something like a meat cleaver always seems to enter the story. Hey, if a god's going to have a meat cleaver, it's going to be better than your meat cleaver, OK? So yeah, and the god starts cutting up the dead god. And zoom, whoosh, that becomes a mountain. Zoom, whoosh, that becomes a valley. Boom, wow, fluids, water is created. And stuff comes into being. It's really, really, really creative. But you know, in the Jewish story, there's no stuff around for God to use. No dead God parts, nothing. God speaks, and it is. Let there be. Which means it all comes from the power of God. Which means everything, if you will, is a product of God. Which means even the birds and the bees and those wonderful Clydesdales that came dancing by here the other day are all, in a very real sense, children of God. They are all connected in the power of God. We're connected to them as well. And it also means when it says we are in God's image, we need to take that seriously. That is something to take seriously. So what? So there's way too much out there that insinuates or outright proclaims that only Christians are good. Or even worse, that only a certain kind of Christian is good. And we got to stop it. Because when we shun or hurt someone we don't like or who isn't like us, we do it to one in the image of God. When we don't feed somebody who needs to be fed, we harm one in the image of God. When we think less of someone because they're not Christian, when we ignore, put down, stomp on, when we kill, we need to understand the gravity of these actions. Or when we think terrible things about ourselves, like, I don't know, we're some kind of worm, we insult the image of God. The Bible says we are dust. And as we are the dust of God, we are beautiful dust. Live like you're worth that title, image of God. Love like others are worth that title. Live a life of compassion. Simply, that is the call of a Christian. And it starts at the very beginning.